Some scientists estimate that there are at least 8 million different species of plants and animals living on Earth today. And that includes us. These species depend on each other in some interesting and often unexpected ways. Take wolves, for example. A few centuries ago, hundreds of thousands of gray wolves roamed the United States. But then, human settlers moved in. By the early 1900s, the gray wolf was nearly extinct in the continental U.S. Without this top predator, deer and elk populations boomed in parts of the American West, and they began eating more young trees and other plants. Before long, many beavers couldn't build dams, and their populations plummeted. And with fewer trees and plants to stabilize the soil, riverbanks eroded, hurting both the rivers and many species that depend on them for survival. By removing just one species, we humans unintentionally caused a domino effect that had a big impact throughout the whole region. Unfortunately, this story is not unique. We are immersed in ecosystems, interconnected networks of plants, animals, and people. And species are now going extinct as much as a thousand times faster than before humans existed. In many ecosystems, a few species can disappear without disrupting the overall health of the network. For example, sea lions can eat several different types of fish. If one species becomes scarce, they can switch to another option. But if multiple fish species disappear through overfishing, for example, suddenly it becomes a lot harder for sea lions to find enough food. Less food for sea lions means less sea lions, and that can affect a whole slew of other creatures. Similarly, when we cut down forests, introduce non-native animals and plants, or spray our land with harmful chemicals, we affect multiple species at the same time. And now, with man-made climate change, many already struggling species are further threatened by shifting temperatures and rainfall patterns. These altered ecosystems could take hundreds or even thousands of years to recover, if they can recover at all. So why is that a problem for us? Because we humans don't live in a bubble. We are part of nature, and we rely on healthy ecosystems for the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. If we keep this up, our own quality of life will be at risk too. But there is hope. Since we're the ones currently doing the most damage, we can also reverse some of these trends. By taking action and changing our own behavior, we've shown that we can help species and ecosystems recover from our impact. Remember the wolves from earlier? In the 1990s, people reintroduced wolves to Yellowstone National Park. In a short time, the deer and elk stopped overgrazing. The trees and other plants grew back, the riverbanks stabilized, and the beavers returned. With some effort on our part, this natural system showed signs of recovery. If we recognize that biodiversity is worth nurturing and protecting, and if we act quickly, we can make the world an easier place to call home, not just for the species around us, but for our species, too.